Hey team, Sergeant Barrera again. I'm gonna go through a series of three different classes. We're gonna talk about individual movement techniques, fire team formations and movement. Uh, next we'll talk about the squat tactics, uh, basic patrolling, uh, TTPs, and then we'll talk about the introduction to battle drills. All right, so all, all of these in that order, leading up to, to the end there, uh, working as a platoon. <clears throat> Uh, again, we're going to identify the roles and responsibilities of each member of a fire team, a fire team, uh, what they consist of, uh, and then how to move as a member of that fire team. Uh, we'll talk about individual movement techniques uh, and then moving together, and then the basic formations executed by a fire team. So the organization of a fire team, you're going to have uh, roughly four personnel. Your team leader, Normally a Sergeant E5 uh, will carry an M4. And then you have a Grenadier, which would be a specialist with an M203 uh, grenade launcher. And then you have an automatic rifleman, another specialist or, or private uh, right here. And then you'll have a rifleman, normally a specialist or private. So individual movement techniques. So a single person by themselves, you have high crawl, low crawl, and then a three to five second rush. Show you a quick video of the high crawl. This uh, provides cover and concealment, uh, poor visibility reduces enemy observation, and then sp when speed is required show you a quick video. The high crawl is selected when the route provides cover and concealment, poor visibility reduces enemy observation, and speed is required. Keep your body off the ground. Rest your weight on your forearms and lower legs. Cradle your weapon in your arms, keeping its muzzle off the ground. Keep your knees well behind your buttocks so it stays low. Move forward by alternately advancing your right elbow and left knee and left elbow and right knee. And that is a high crawl. Notice the uh, big things he talked about is uh, where your weapon where your weapon is situated, ensuring that you're not putting the muzzle on the ground, you're cradling your weapon, your non-firing hand is um, grabbing the pistol grip. Low crawl. The low crawl is selected when the route provides cover or concealment less than one foot in height. Visibility provides the enemy good observation and speed is not required. Keep your body as flat as possible to the ground. Hold your weapon by grasping the sling at the upper sling swivel, letting the hand guard rest on your forearm and the butt of the weapon drag on the ground, thus keeping the muzzle off the ground. Move forward by first pushing both arms forward and pulling your right leg forward, then pulling with both arms and pushing with your right leg. Continue this push-pull method, changing legs as necessary until you reach your next position. All right, again, the big things with that is keeping the muzzle off the ground. Notice head is gonna be cocked to the side uh, and dragging on the ground as well. A uh, big thing here is ensuring that that muzzle is not pointed at your face. It's pointed uh, away from your face. And then keeping your body as low to the ground as possible. And then you have a three to five second rush. The rush is selected when there is no cover or concealment along your route 
and or enemy fire allows brief exposure. Roll or crawl away from your current firing position. Raise your body by straightening your arms and springing to your feet. Run to your next position, keeping the distance short and trying not to stay on your feet longer than three to five seconds so the enemy cannot track you with automatic fire or bring accurate fire onto you. Plant both feet just before hitting the ground and fall forward by grasping the heel of the butt of your weapon and using the butt of your weapon to break your fall. Assume a firing position in a covered location if possible and cover your buddy's movement. Big thing with this one is keeping the muzzle discipline, ensuring that your muzzle is pointed down range and not uh, left to right and possibly pointing at your uh, counterparts. Their movement formations, the purpose uh, moving uh, from team squads and platoon uh, you're using them for control, for security, flexibility, and fire capability, and they all play a different role depending on how you uh, position your personnel. So the basic formation is fire team wedge. Uh, there's a five to 10 meter interval between soldiers, uh, and then you expand or contract depending on terrain. So if the terrain is, you can, you can see very well in the terrain, it's not hard to move or anything like that, you're gonna want that 10 meter interval between soldiers. Um, and the main reason being for that, you'll hear it a lot, is the, the kill radius of a hand grenade is five meters. Uh, so if you have a couple of people or, or maybe three people, several uh, people in your five meter radius in your, in your bubble, then uh, and somebody throws a hand grenade or the enemy throws a hand grenade, uh, could potentially either kill or wound all two or three of you. Uh, so just ensure that uh, you got good spacing uh, from the rest of your teammates. A file is used when terrain or visibility pre precludes the use of the wedge. Uh, 10 meters between soldiers, return to the wedge as soon as terrain permits. All right, so a little bit uh, less of 360 degree security with uh, this one, as opposed to the 360 security with the fire team wedge. All right. And here's uh, when normally used uh, controlling flexibility, uh, capabilities and restrictions and then security. Better security with the wedge than the file. All right, so that's just a team. Uh, we're gonna go into the, the squad, squad level. Um, we'll talk about the two, the two types of patrols and the different elements, the five principles of patrolling, and then uh, hand and arm signals. We'll, we'll send out a, uh, a hand and arm signal pamphlet or, or handout uh, that, that, will, that you will be using during your time here slash once you become a lieutenant. To accomplish an assigned patrolling mission, a platoon or squad must perform specific tasks to include security, passage of lines, occupation rally points, and crossing danger areas. They must also accomplish patrolling objectives, such as recon, actions at the objective, etc. As with other missions, the leader tasks elements of his unit, platoon or squad, in accordance with his estimate of the situation. Identifying those tasks, the patrol must perform and decides which elements will perform them. Where possible, in assigning tasks, the leader should maintain squad and fire team integrity with chain of command continuity during the patrol. The basic patrol is organized into the following elements. The headquarters consists of the patrol leader, assistant patrol leader, radio telephone operator, RTO, forward observer, FO, and FO, RTO, if required and attached. Additional headquarters elements may consist of any other attachments that the patrol leader decides that he or the assistant patrol leader must control directly. This often includes any machine gun team. The platoon or squad leader is assigned as the patrol leader. The platoon sergeant or assistant squad leader is assigned as the assistant patrol leader. Aid and litter team. 
aid and litter teams are responsible for treating and evacuating casualties. Enemy prisoner of war team. EPW teams are responsible for controlling enemy prisoners in accordance with the five S's and the leader's guidance. Surveillance team. The surveillance team keeps watch on the objective from the time that the leader's reconnaissance ends until the unit deploys for actions on the objective. They then join their element. In route recorder. The in route recorder records all information collected during the mission. Compass man. The compass man assists the navigation by ensuring the lead fire team leader remains on course at all times. Instructions to the compass man must include an initial azimuth with subsequent azimuths provided as necessary. The compass man should preset his compass on the initial azimuth before moving out, especially if the move will occur during limited visibility conditions. The patrol leader should also designate an alternate compass man. Pace man. The pace man and alternate pace man maintain an accurate pace at all times. The platoon or squad leader should designate how often the pace man is to report the pace to him. The pace man should also report the pace at the end of each leg. Machine gun team. The machine gunner carries the M240 machine gun with assistance from the assistant gunner, who usually carries a tripod, spare barrel, and additional ammunition. Two main types of patrols, uh, reconnaissance patrol and then combat patrol. So you have the area recon, route recon, and zone recon. And then for the combat patrols, you have raid, ambush, and a security. Um, as we're going doing our field training exercises, uh, both obviously we'll do our mega labs and we'll teach all these things and how to do them uh, on hand. You actually going through, walking through and doing them uh, physically. So the principles of patrolling, you have your planning, reconnaissance, security, control, and then common sense. For planning is quickly making a simple plan and then effectively communicating to the lowest level. A great plan takes forever to complete and is poorly disseminated isn't a great plan. Plan and prepare to a realistic standard and then rehearse everything. For the reconnaissance, it's your responsibility as a leader to confirm what you think you know and then to find out what you don't know. So you should have a good, good plan to conduct your rec reconnaissance. Security, uh, preserving your force as a whole and then your recon assets in particular. So every, every single one of your team members and every single one of their weapon systems counts. Anyone could be the difference between victory and defeat. So ensure that you place your personnel in the spots that you think are uh, gonna be best or more beneficial to you and your team. Control is a, a clear concept of the operation and then the commander's intent, coupled with discipline and communication uh, brings every person and weapon you have available to overwhelm your enemy at the decisive point. So you placing your people where they need to be and then moving at the right times it's, is what's going to determine the outcome of your mission. And then finally, common sense. Uh, just do what you're supposed to do uh, without somebody having to tell you uh, despite your own personal discomfort or fear. Common sense is one of the biggest things uh, that's going to make or break a patrol. Uh, sometimes uh, people get too, too much in the weeds of, well, I have to follow this plan, like it tells me in the book, A, B, C, and D. Well, sometimes you, it doesn't play out that way and common sense tells you that you have to start with B instead of A. Uh, so if you're on the ground, you have to make that decision to not do A and move forward. Uh, so have some common sense and then follow through with your plan. Again, hand and arm signals, we'll go through and, and talk, talk those uh, later on. We'll, we'll send a handout out.
right, and we'll start with uh, battle drills here. Probably have an, another video. So you're probably thinking, why am I watching this video about a race car driver uh, when I'm, I'm in ROTC? Uh, so if this video does, shows you, well, this video does show you the proper drill uh, and, and what people should do if there's a fire in their, in their race car, right? So real quick, notice the fire, probably felt it, said, boom, I'm getting out. Uh, and as he's getting out, there's somebody coming down with fire extinguisher. So it was pretty quick from the time he got out to the time fire extinguisher was, was used on the vehicle. Uh, so I'm pretty sure this team has one, probably seen it before. Uh, and, and two, they probably practiced it. They, they rehearsed it, uh, to make sure that they're in sync and, and can react uh, a certain way. So very important for us to know that the more you rehearse or the better you rehearse is the better outcome of all of your battle drills or missions. So the purpose of battle drills, obviously uh, group skills designed to train a unit to react and survive in the common combat situations designed for rapid reaction situations without the application of a deliberate decision-making process. So kind of like, you know, stopping at a, at a stop sign. Like it just, it just comes naturally. It's a stop sign. You hit the brakes. Uh, you don't even think about it. You just hit the brakes. All right. So that's, that's the whole uh, process with battle drills. You practice, 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 practice. So it just becomes natural. Characteristics, standardized collective action points made in response to common battle occurrences initiated on cue, uh, trained response to a stimulus, uh, require minimal leader orders to accomplish, uh, vital to success in combat, and critical to preserving life, designed for rapid reaction situations without the ap application of a uh, decision-making process. So battle drills, we have uh, security at a halt, reacting to contact, uh, reacting to an ambush. Uh, we'll talk about an, a near ambush and then uh, react to indirect fire. Security to halt, <clears throat> key steps. Uh, unit leader gives the arm, arm ha and hand signals uh, to halt. As soldiers establish local security, then leaders adjust positions as necessary. Unit leaders report situation to higher headquarters. So uh, when you have a halt, normally uh, everybody pulls, starts you know, pulling security to the left and right. Um, all, all the way around, right, 360 security, uh, and then uh, call up the leaders. Leaders will have either a little huddle uh, there in the center and make sure that they come up with the right decision to make, uh, and then either move or establish a, uh, uh, a security posture, meaning uh, getting everybody into the prone position, uh, assigning um, sectors of fire and all of that. Reacting to contact, uh, basically con uh, reacting to contact. Contact means uh, we're, we're on a patrol, we're walking and then all of a sudden, boom, uh, we get hit with small arms fire. Uh, so that's what initiates the, the direct fire contact. So we immediately return fire, we see cover, uh, we, we locate the enemy and then place well and fire on enemy positions. Um, so we'll talk about the near 
reacting to a near uh, contact. Uh, basically, all we do in that aspect is is brush, right? So if we are getting hit from the left and they're near, uh, they're close to us, uh, that near element will will just go through uh, go through that kill zone uh, while obviously uh, firing um, on the enemy. And then uh, report B contact to higher headquarters. Obviously that goes without being said. Uh, all of these things, we have to make sure that we are in contact with our higher headquarters and letting them know what's going on on the ground. So when the unit is moving tactically, receives accurate direct fire, uh, soldiers in the kill zone return fire uh, onto the suspected enemy positions. Soldiers not in the kill zone will place well-aimed suppressive, suppressive fire on the enemy. So assault through the kill zone, destroy the enemy, report to higher headquarters. Uh, and then there's obviously there's other things that go along with it. And uh, those battle drills or those tactics, techniques, and procedures are um, practice within your organization. So some may be different than others. Uh, here, uh, we'll let the team leaders, squad leaders and platoon sergeants, platoon leaders uh, kind of guide you through those as, as the time comes. Indirect fire. Uh, obviously, you'll hear, you'll probably hear some kind of uh, uh, dr indirect fire coming, maybe some whistle, whistle sounds, something like that. Uh, uh, and then you would yell incoming or you will hear incoming um, and then rounds will impact. Immediately seek the best available cover. So immediately meaning you will drop down into the prone position, face down, get as close to the ground as possible. Uh, and then the platoon leader or leader of the organization is going to yell out uh, a designated rally point after you know, after the impacts have stopped. Uh, so once it stopped, you uh, well, that leader would say, let's go to the 12 o'clock for 300 meters. So that means for 300 meters, you are picking up your gear and you are running at the 12 o'clock position for that, that uh, determined amount of distance. And then uh, that's where your rally point would be. Once you get there, uh, the leadership would get accountability of all personnel, send up some uh, some lace reports, liquid ammo, casualties, and equipment uh, to to hire. So that's pretty much it as far as uh, battle drills. Um, a little difficult doing it, just kind of reading reading through it uh, on video. So. Uh, once we get into the uh, field training exercises and, and those leadership labs leading up to the tr uh, field training exercises, uh, you will see how it works uh, actually in person. All right. If you have any questions in the meantime, please let us know. Give us a call. Give us a Slack message or a, an email. And we'll get back to you. Breach hell.